Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Today I would like to talk about Stoic Logic. I mean, ideally, I would like to talk about Stoic Logic over the course of a whole number of videos, but so much content, so little time. What I'm going to give you is just kind of the briefest little highlights and overview. But even so, the fact that I'm even talking about Stoic Logic indicates that what we are doing in this series of videos is not what you generally get in your typical here's an introduction to logic course. Stoics are almost never even mentioned at all, which is super curious because of the contributions that they have in the history of logic. First of all, they were working kind of at the time of Aristotle and in response to a lot of his developments, not just in logic, but also in philosophy more generally. But more importantly than that, the Aristotelian syllogistic that we've looked at is super interesting because it lets us illustrate so many aspects of the study and kind of practice of logic with the distinction between language, semantics, proof theory, the look at meta theory, soundness, all of these things. But in reality, like if you look at what practical, what practicing logicians are doing nowadays, with a few rare exceptions, they're not doing the syllogistic. Instead, the kind of logical system that provides the framework and the foundation for a lot of modern developments is propositional logic. The logic built from taking complete sentences and combinations of them as kind of the fundamental building blocks. But that's exactly what the Stoics did. So on the one hand, we have Aristotle, who built his logic from these notions of terms and copulae. On the other hand, we have the Stoics, who had this concept of electa, or sorry, lecton is the singular, lecta is the plural. And this is basically a technical term introduced to say, like, what is being said in a sentence. And these individual lecta are the building blocks of Stoic logic. So simple sentences, some uh, examples that you find in the Stoic literature include things like, it is day, it is night, he is moving, the earth flies. Well, on Greek physics, it does. You will marry a beautiful woman. Not me, I'm already taken. But this is a fundamentally different approach to logic than you get with the syllogistic. So this is interesting because it shows this kind of historical development and opposition of you know, here's one type of logic, here's a competing account. But it's also interesting because of how much the Stoic account of logic ends up looking like modern day propositional logic. It's not exact, and I will be sure to point out exactly where the differences are, but given the similarity, it's amazing that nobody talks about this more when talking about propositional logic. Anyway, the basic definitions that I want you to get in this video before we go on to kind of dealing with specifics of the, uh, of the Stoic development of logic is this notion of a lecton, singular, or lecta, plural. These are basic sentences that are simple in the sense that they do not contain any of the logical connectives. They might be complex in the sense that all of the categorical propositions that we looked at in the syllogistic count as lecta. So all cats are animals, that's a lecton, and you might think, oh, but that's a complex sentence. It's got quantifiers, it's got terms and everything. But that level of complexity, we're just going to be glossing over. So that forms one single unit that doesn't have any other logical operators in it. So we will just count that as a basic proposition without any further internal structure. So we need to say something about how these lecta can be formed and what they mean. I'm actually going to do semantics before I say more about language, because the semantics for these lecta is very easy. We use the notion of interpretation again, but instead of an interpretation assigning objects to various sets, the type of interpretation we use for the Stoic lecta is just a truth value assignment. So we have these individual building blocks of propositions, a truth value assignment or an interpretation for these building blocks is just a list of which ones are true and which ones are not. That's it. So 
As I've said before, when it comes to like the basic semantics, this isn't something that logic is going to tell you about. This is something that you have to look into the real world. So if I give you the sentence, it is day, logic won't tell you if that is true or not. You'll have to check the time. So sometimes it will be true. Sometimes it won't be. But the, once we have this interpretation, you know, look out into the real world, determine what time of day it is, look at your sentence, is it true or false? Then we can take these truth values and combine them into more complex sentences and figure out the truth values of those sentences then. So first thing to note is that every individual lecton has a corresponding negation. So these are ones where you take your lecton and you add, it is not the case that, or for purposes of abbreviation, we will just say not. So if it is day is true, not, it is day is false. If it is false, er, sorry, <laughs> if it is night is false, then not it is night is true and so on and so forth. So basically every basic sentence corresponds to a negated sentence. Whatever the negated sentence, whatever truth value the first sentence has, the negated sentence has the opposite truth value and true and false are the only options. So this gives you the basic building blocks, our lecta, and a concept of negation. The other logical connectives or logical operations that the Stoics talk about are implication, disjunction, conjunction, and also, though we won't talk about that at all in this series of videos, modality, questions of necessity and possibility. So we're just gonna, we're gonna set aside questions of modal logic. They will come maybe in another set of videos. But for now, what we'll be interested in in the next three sets of videos are stoic implication, stoic conjunction, and stoic disjunction. And then we'll say something about how these, how these different operations can be combined in order to form good arguments. And we'll give the definition of good argument uh, with respect to the interpretation, the idea of truth value assignments on the Stoic account. Oh, there was one more thing I was going to say before I finished. Namely, if you want to know more about Stoic Logic, this book by Benson Mates, it's called Stoic Logic, funnily enough, highly recommended. It has a lot of good discussion, but um, also quite interestingly is it contains a lot of like actual texts of the Stoics translated into English. So if you can't read ancient Greek or Latin, don't worry, it's all made accessible to you. Anyway, there's your eight minute introduction to the logic of the Stoics. See you next time.